cooking show. What's up, everybody? It's a little after five o'clock. You know what time it is? It's time for the most exhilarating, electrifying, entertaining, most watched cooking show out Shoot there you. right now with my good friend. Who needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyhow. The guru of grilling, the sultan of smoke, the father of flavor. You know him. I love him. Chef Greg Mueller. What's everybody? Cheers to you. Ah, refreshing. Welcome to another episode of After Hours presented by RecTech. I'm Chef Greg, your Director of Culinary Innovation. Jody Flanagan, usually the the redneck or the, the fat boy from Portland, <laughs> as you were calling him yesterday. He's on vacation. He was actually here today working on his vacation. So Jody Flanagan, take some time off. You've earned it. Um, That's but again, so you guys give some hearts, give some love. Show my, uh, my buddy some affection, show him some love. Go ahead and like and subscribe to his, uh, his channel. That's going to be Barbecue Dad Jody Flanagan. We miss him. We love him. But on the ones and twos today, we got my main man, Chef John. What's up, everybody? We got another great recipe today. You know, we've been busy around here today. We did yeah. a couple uh, off-site video shoots. Yeah. We've done uh, some testing, some recipe development, yeah. some R&D, yeah. some tasting, some eating. And now Can't it's time to do some drinking because yeah. it's after hours. That's right. So that's right. I got the uh, the silver bullet nice and cold here because, <laughs> I mean, it is cooling down a little bit here in Augusta. It is, we thank might, the Lord. Oh man, I tell you what, waking up today, there's a little bit of a rain coming down, yeah. and uh, you almost needed a light jacket because yeah, it, it was a little, little crisp. Yeah, it was and a little I say overcast. it was crisp; it was like 72. Yeah. It was so. nice. It was beautiful this morning. It got hot like it does in Georgia at this time of year. It didn't get hot. Like, it literally went from, like, perfect to mo the, like, the most ugliest humidity yeah. ever. All like, I know literally, I was sweating. As I'm walking across the parking lot, it went from perfect to, like, okay, this is not enjoyable. <laughs> um, but we got a great recipe today. We're going to show you how to do a smoked chicken salt and boca. Super easy. All right, we're going a little Italian flair this week. We're showing you the versatility of the Rectech behind us. We'll be cooking on the RT590 and the RTB380 Bullseye, which I hear you can subscribe to the newsletter and get some emails when that thing's going to come back out. So, That's right. Uh, do me a favor, guys. Make sure you share this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them down below. Chef John, my main man out there, will go ahead. He will put his finger up. Like this. That's right. And let me know that you know he's got something important to say. Well, That's right. everything he says is important. <laughs> Specifically, when it comes to y'all's questions and comments, let us know. So, Chef John, I know you were off site today. Yes. Busy, busy day. Yeah, man. I was toting grills, dropping grills off. I'm like the unofficial grill dropper offer and picker upper. So we've got a Sherpa and a Schlepper. Yeah. I'm the schlepper. You're the schlepper. I'm the schlepper. All right. Well, I'm going to make you a delicious dinner tonight. Yeah, okay? buddy. And before I can eat it, you're going to taste it, and you're going to give me a, a review. Okay. I okay? love that. Is, that. is that a fair squeeze? Fair squeeze. All right. So we've got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And you guys know I am not a fan of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm just not. Um, they're very lean, not a lot of flavor, um, bland, and depending on where you buy them, they can be really tough which is kind of strange for a prime muscle like a, a chicken breast, okay? But I've gone ahead and trimmed out some of the gobbly goo on the side. So maybe there's like a little bit of, uh, you know, tendon on one side. There's a little, you know, fatty McGee on the other. But what I like to do with my chicken breasts, okay, I butterfly them. So you get a nice sharp knife, and you're just going to go ahead and scallopini cut this into two pieces, just like that, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And normally... I would have my uh, Rectech on full with a sear kit, and I would cook these hot and fast. Why, you ask, hot and fast? The answer is simple. All of your lean meats don't have the fat and connective tissue that benefit from a long, low and slow. So, i.e. pork loins, pork tenderloins, chicken breasts, 
when you cook them low and slow, you're really going to kind of give them like a weird sort of leathery texture, and you're going to toughen them up because there's not fat to break down. So what you want to do is you want to cook those hot and fast, and that way you can lock in those juices and cook that muscle uh, to perfection. So again, I'm just take this last breast here and just butterfly it open just like that. Okay, and normally I would marinate these for just a little bit and some seasoning, and um, be good to go on the uh, the rec tech. But not tonight, <laughs> and not for this smoked chicken salt and boca. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Hey, sh uh, Chef Craig, do you know what uh, where the name salt and boca comes from? Um, I do not. Actually, I didn't do very much research before the show because we were busy. Um, but I kind of cut my teeth at an Italian restaurant back in the day, and we did a lot of veal and chicken salt and boca. I love it because you get to wrap it in one of my favorite things to eat, uh, prosciutto ham, mm. so that Italian cured ham. And then Chef John's been outdoing himself, overworking himself, making sure that Rectech garden is on point. It's true. So we picked some delicious sage out of the garden. Um, Chef John, you are like Mr. Magoo of the garden. I'm telling you, uh, not everyone knew that about me, but I have a green thumb. Yeah, just so you know. Little I mean, that darker complexion has a green thumb. I'm just saying. Right. So I'm going to take my meat mallet here. I'm going to use the flat side because I don't want to really beat these too much. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tenderize these chicken breasts just a little bit. All I'm looking to do is get them nice and even. Okay? And chef tip for you, put a piece of plastic wrap over the top. And that way you don't send uh, chicken gobbly goo across your kitchen. All right, Chef Greg, I got a question for you about grill maintenance. Got an answer for you. What is the best way to clean the inside of the lid? Inside of the lid, okay. I got to ask, why do you want to clean the inside of the lid? Oh, for me, like, I don't get crazy with chemicals on the inside of the grill. Don't use any uh, degreasers or caustic chemicals. If you want to clean the inside of the lid, here's what you want to do. Run that grill at about 500 degrees for about 20 minutes. Um, any sort of grease and fat you have is going to drip down off into the uh, drip bucket. Um, after that, if you want, you might see a little creosote start to flake off. You can use a towel or a soft brush, knock it off, and you're good to go. It's that simple. That was, that was easy. So that I'm going to really take these easy. chicken breasts, and I'm going to put them into more manageable pieces. So I'm going to cut these into sort of even, consistent uh, sort of pieces here. And this will make sense in a second. Now, traditionally, when we season these, we're actually going to dip these in flour and cook them. Now, this one's a little bit big. I'm actually going to go into, like, thirds here, okay? Traditionally, you would dip these in flour and you would saute them in some butter. But it's still bikini season around here, and Chef John and myself That's right. are still watching our figures because, you know what? This barbecue bod is hard to maintain. That's what I'm saying. It's I'm watching mine get round. It's a oiled machine. And I want to be here for a while, so knowing that, i got to slow it down a little bit, kind of lighten up where I can. This is a great recipe to do that. So we're going to take that Colden's Freaking Greek. We're going to kind of go over the top of that chicken. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to add a little of that Ben's heifer dust. And we're just going to give a little sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. All right, now just so I can be clear, my hands, I have chicken on my hands. I'm going to re-glove. Why? Because I'm about to put, touch some herbs. And I want you guys thinking out there that the food safety police, that I'm cross-contaminating you anything. Go. Because someone tried to get me on a sheet pan the other they day. They really that, did. That we were going to cook in the grill. They did. Okay? So full transparency, new gloves. Okay? I don't want anybody to think I'm you know, spreading the chicken gobbledygoo and jupy everywhere. <laughs> and they're probably like, what in the heck are you saying? So this, this sage, I'm telling you, like... Next level. Yeah, and it's pineapple sage, Chef. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, it's delicious. Thank you. So I was curious, though, a little test piece I did had a little bit more of a, I'll say, of like a, a, a citrus note to That's it. That's what but it was. Really, really delicious. That was so we're just going to take this, uh, this sage and just give a nice leaf over the top. No sticks, no stems, just some leaves. That's what I'm talking about. Chef Greg, could you do this with thighs? With thighs? You could, in fact. Um, now, the only challenge with thighs, depending on how they're trimmed, they can be fattier, which is fine. I love boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that want to cook the chicken breast and that lean meat, and they ask me great ways to do that. And this is a great way that you can incorporate uh, that leaner uh, chicken breast into your repertoire. So we're just going to go ahead and 
do a one of these. Okay, they're all covered. And then, now I'm only seasoning one side of this because they're really thin. And we're going to wrap it in my favorite prosciutto ham. Well, I love it. So I went to the grocery store and I had them cut that really thin. Ooh. I doubled up on the slices. And I'm going to take that sage leaf and that chicken and wrap them just like that. Oh my goodness. So if you like bacon wrap things, this is like better than that because it's prosciutto. Okay. And this is going to give us some saltiness, some good flavor. It's going to render out and be nice and crisp. But unlike bacon, it's already cooked. So I don't have to cook it as long to render out um, and get crispy. So if I wrap this in bacon, I would severely overcook the chicken to getting that uh, bacon nice and crisp. So, yeah. Good, good, good stuff. You can do this with veal. You can do this with thin uh, pork cutlets as well. But for me, this prosciutto, ooh, child, please. And this is only half of the recipe. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Okay, uh, we got a question out here. Dale's seasoning, is it good for brisket injection? Um, in moderation, yes. So Dale's can be extremely salty. Um, if you're going to do that as your injection, I would recommend cutting um, that uh, with some beef uh, au jus or beef stock. You don't want to go straight Dale's because... Like, on the salt meter, Through it's kind of up there. Through the roof. Yeah. All right, Top Fan Vince Smicka uh, says um, the pan, what do you use, pancetta today? Uh, prosciutto. Prosciutto. He says prosciutto is better than bacon. Yeah, in some cases. <laughs> is this okay. one of those cases? I, I think so. Okay. Now, I like, and I did some earlier because I'm a little bit of an overachiever, and we have hardworking men and women here at Rectech Rolls that have to eat. So I told him, hey, why don't we make you something really good? All right, so I've got the RT590 preheated behind me to 450 degrees. We're going to put these on there for about 15 minutes. And uh, during that 15 minutes, we're going to make us a really good pan sauce. And then we might, you know, have a little banter back and forth. And maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do something kind of kind of different tonight, John. And maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll give something away. Okay. So, guys, if you want to see us. Chef John and myself get in trouble. Yeah. Go off kilter and let's give something away. Let's do it. Comment down below, and uh, let's see how much trouble we yeah. get in, and hopefully we're allowed back tomorrow. How yeah, about that? Yeah, we're going rogue. We're going rogue. I mean, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission, right? You didn't hear that from me. I didn't say that. Well, I mean, ah. All right, sure. Come on in here. Let's go. <laughs> So we've got this grill preheated to 450 degrees with those non-stick grilling mats. Um, I love these for delicate things, fish, um, all sorts of seafood, anything that's small enough that could stick to the grates, fall through the grates, or give you kind of issues, uh, you know, sticking to the grill. Great, great piece of technology here. You can pick these up at rectech.com. Super cheap. We use them from everything from meatloaf. Whoop, that one kind of came apart. We'll fix that. Everything from meatloaf to smoked salsa. And this grill is 590 square inches. But you see I'm loading this bad boy up with enough chicken to feed all the good boys and girls here at Rectech Grills. That looks delicious, Chef Greg. They're giving you so much love right now. I mean, that's it. Super, super, super simple. Okay, that's it. Now, just so we don't get the uh, good taste police, this is a dirty cutting board. It's going to go into the magical land of under the table <laughs> where you guys can't see That's it. That's right. Okay? That is a sanitary land of under the table. But so that, that cutting board, though, let's talk about the cutting board real quick. They've asked about it. They say it's beautiful. They want to know where they could get it. All right. If you guys want to get yourself a really good cutting board, okay, you got to come to Rec Tech Academy. But if you can't come to RecTech Academy, make sure you check out our good friends at Holy City Boards. They're located uh, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Um, one of my good buddies owns that business. And the cool thing about Holy City Boards is cutting boards are not cheap, okay? But they actually take a percentage of proceeds, okay? And this is where they get, they get super cool. They actually donate a percentage of their proceeds to their local food bank to make That's sure awesome. that uh, the people that are a little uh, less fortunate in the Charleston area have a good meal. 
So shout out Holy City Boards. Go ahead and give them a like and follow on all social media. You can check them out on Instagram at Holy City uh, Holy City Boards. Um, Brett Cunningham, they do a great job. Uh, his wife, Jen, fantastic people. Um, yeah, super cool, super cool. But RecTech Academy, check it out. You can pick up limited edition Academy swag. Again, only at Academy. We've got a couple dates left that haven't sold out in 2021. 2020 is on lock, so I apologize. All the dates for September Oct and December are sold out, um, but we have some great uh, dates next summer. Check it out. It's a great present, great anniversary. It's a great Christmas present. Check it out at rectech.com. Scroll down to the Academy tab. Share John, what do you got, buddy? All right, let's talk about the grill mats real quick. Um, talk about how long they last. Uh, what's the max temperature you can um, put on those things? Fantastic question. So the uh, non-stick cooking mat, okay, they're great for temps up to 550 degrees. You want to avoid open fire or direct uh, flame with these. Now, you can dishwasher, uh, clean them in there. They're perfectly fine. I wash mine in the sink with some Dawn. Um, what you don't want to do is kind of fold them in half. If you have to store them in a drawer, just roll them up, okay? They will break down over time, and that's completely normal. I've had some for over a year. And then uh, Julie folded in half to put it in a, in a drawer, and it cracked in half, but then it was perfect <laughs> for smaller briskets and or two racks of ribs. There you go, Julie, so, helping us out, not you even know. knowing it. Um, and again, if you want to cut them smaller, grab some sharp scissors and just kind of trim them up, they're good to go. But I love my nonstick cooking mat, everything from salsas and meatloaf, delicate things, fish, great, fantastic. Bacon, yeah. ooh, candied bacon. Yeah, true. So what do you say we get this show on the road here, John? And let's, let's do make it. us a delicious sauce. Yeah, let's make that sauce. All right. So yesterday we made that amazing smoked seafood linguine. Stupid delicious. Yeah. Okay. We had the shrimp, the scallops, and the clams. We smoked off some garlic. We've got some extra garlic here. I've got some more of that sage out of the garden. And I've got a little uh, th three quarters of an onion that Chef John wrapped up from us, wrapped up for us from something last week. So I'm going to go ahead and dice this up. And we're going to make a really good sort of mushroom gravy to go along with these amazing chicken salt and bocas. Okay. Now you can do this sauce uh, in the grill right alongside the, uh, the chicken. But I'm going to put it on the bullseye because we loaded that 590 up. Okay. I've got some brown gravy. Okay. This is some roasted chicken gravy that we had laying around in the freezer. Um, not really a recipe for that. Took the chicken, uh, chicken drippings, made a dark roux, added in there some chicken stock, cooked that along. I'm going to grab a little of this sage here. And uh, I, again, I like my herbs kind of chunky. So I'm just going to go ahead and rip off some of this delicious sage and just give it like a once over with the knife. Okay. Just like that. Perfect. And then we've got some mushrooms. Okay. Just these are baby Bella mushrooms. All right, so what I'm gonna do is this is gonna cook the, the uh, mushrooms first. We're gonna cook the water out of it, add the herbs, the gravy. We're gonna add a little bit of Marsala wine. Now you can add Madeira, Marsala, Sherry, Vermouth. It's gonna sound crazy. John, are you a Sambuca fan? Yeah, I'm, I like it when I'm cooking with it. All right, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, Sambuca is a anise or sort of licorice flavored yep. liquor. It's fantastic in coffee. Yep. My grandmother Veronica, who's like this tall, that wide, like 93 <laughs> years old, she loves her Sambuca and her coffee. She won't even drink coffee unless she can have booze in it. That's how she goes about her Rectech lifestyle. That's hilarious. She's always drinking. That's hilarious. I mean, she'll even <laughs> eat raisins, but she has to soak the raisins in gin. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and add a couple glugs of oil in there. We're going to add these mushrooms. And we're just going to let that go for just a couple minutes. Okay? And you can see it's nice and uh, going to sizzle down. And we're going to cook the water out of those mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on riot mode because you know what? I'm a little impatient. So we want this to be done right about the same time that our chicken is done. And then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. And normally you would put some provolone cheese on top of your salt and bocas. There you go. But that's not how I want to live my Rectech lifestyle. I gotta up the ante a little bit because you know we like to rectechify recipes around here. Definitely. Okay, that's how we do. So we've got some fresh mozzarella Ooh. that we're going to put over the top. It's okay. a little more of a umptious mouthfeel, a little yeah. bit more decadence, and it makes it different. Not much. Okay, because Chef different John. is good. Why not? Okay. Chef John, any good questions or comments coming in? Yes, they want to know time and temp on the smoked garlic. 
All right, so smoked garlic. Sorry, I had to uh, wet my whistle, wet if you it, will. Wet it, Chef Greg. Smoked garlic, I just trim the tops off. I flip them upside down in a pan. You could use a, an aluminum disposable pan. You could use in any sort of oven-safe baking dish. And when I do it, I tend to do a lot. Why? Because we use a lot. So I did like eight clove, eight bulbs la uh, last night, and we've only got one left. Sorry, we're like fat kids at heart around here. And all I'm going to do is just squeeze that out, and it's going to be delicious um, in there. But... You know, you can go 225 for about three hours. You can go 300 for about an hour and a half. You know what? At the end of the day, once it's soft and you can smash it, kind of like you guys needing to smash this video right now, go ahead and share it everywhere because you know what? Smoked chicken, salt, and mocha. Everybody's got to put this recipe in their little, you know, grandma recipe box on the yeah, counter. True story. It's that good. Um, but again, the smoked garlic, if you're impatient, you can go 300 for about an hour. You can go 225 for two hours, three hours. It just depends. Uh, the size of the, the the garlic bulb. If they're smaller, less time. Bigger, more time. John, what you got? Julie Williams asked, uh, what kind of cast iron pan are you using? So it's just a Lodge cast iron pan. Uh, we are uh, huge fans of any sort of cast iron. But yes. Lodge, you can pick up at the grocery store. Honestly, the best thing to do is like uh, check out those yard sales and uh, estate sales near you. Yeah. You might be able to find some really cool cast iron. And especially if that cast iron is like pre-World yeah. uh, War. Yeah. Like that's the good good. That's the real, real Now, good. that's like the collector stuff. Yeah, it's true. And I don't know personally how to tell it apart. But <laughs> those that do yeah. make bank. Yeah, it's true. Kind of picking up some cast Flea iron. Flea market. That's where I get all my cast mm -hmm. iron. Most One of my of buddies, uh, Ward Richardson, he uh, always posting pictures of baby cows at his farm. Okay. He is a connoisseur oh, really? of cast iron. Of the cast iron? For sure. All right. I love like, it. Like, he can look at a pan and know, like, what year, when it was, and tell you how much it should cost. Wow. Yeah. So if ever I have a cast iron question, I'd shoot Ward a text. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Shout out to you, buddy. So Ward's a, a super solid dude. All right. Let's go ahead and get some seasoning on these mushrooms. I'm going to add some of that Colden's Freaking Greek. And you can see those mushrooms start to kind of wilt down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and add in some onion over the top. Okay. And that's it. We're just going to forget about it for maybe another, uh, I don't know, two minutes. We'll see. It just depends. Charlie almost got squoze over there. So it's difficult because we have live videos. So we have a camera on a, on a gimbal. We got a camera on a tripod. Yeah. And then a tripod. And then we got Charlie and just got Charlie you know, doing the crib predators. walk That's back right. here, trying to sneak in and sneak out and get pictures. <laughs> Love Charlie. But every now and then he's kind of doing a thing. You don't know if he's going left or going right. So, Johnny, any other good questions, buddy? Uh, they're just loving everything. Uh, they're just making uh, like observations. They said you're missing your spoon from your uh, apron. Well, I have a pen there because I was writing down recipes. Okay. Okay. So it depends on what I'm doing. Now, I am cooking chicken, so I've got <laughs> my thermometer. Okay. So it just depends on the day, how I accessorize. You know, maybe I've got a phone in here. I had uh, hot gloves at one point, which I think are not in my pocket anymore. There but you go. it just depends. Okay. Quit Jack, hating out there. Jack Davison wants to know, what Italian restaurant did you work at? Uh, okay, Jack. So I was working in downtown Atlanta at a restaurant called Fratella Dinopoli. So I worked in the Buckhead location. We had locations in Roswell and Alpharetta. And it was a family-style Italian restaurant. And we were busy. Okay, we made everything from scratch, from sauce and sugu and fish and steaks. And uh, it's kind of where I cut my teeth and learned... I won't say fine dining because it wasn't fine dining, but we slung some pasta out of that place. Like rigatoni alla vodka. I mean, we would probably make like 130 platters of that. And literally the pasta dishes would come table side like this. So they would feed like four people. That's what I'm talking and, about. And uh, the people that knew would order half portions of everything. And like everybody like in good Italian meals, you kind of share and you mangia everybody at one time off of everything. Um, now, the other locations were like chicken parmesan warehouses, and it was just chicken parm, 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 chicken parm. and uh, not so enjoyable to work at, but I love working down there. It was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, I felt like the uh, the old uh, SNL skit, cheap burger, cheap burger, cheap burger, cheap burger, cheap burger, yeah. but it was chicken parm. So, let's check out these uh, salt and bocas. We're probably almost ready for the, uh, the mozzarella cheese, but let's take a look. Oh, we are ready. Look at that. That prosciutto is starting to render out. I can see that sage underneath. That chicken's got some great color to it. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Again, we're cooking at 450 degrees. We are burning those delicious Kingsford maple pellets. Okay, that maple is going to give us a nice sweetness to that chicken. 
It's going to really go well with the uh, saltiness of the prosciutto and the, like, the nice vibrancy of that fresh sage. Lots of adjectives today. Jordan Johnson would be proud. Okay. We're cooking chicken breasts, not chicken wings, and he's not interested. So it's also after 5 o'clock. Good observation, Sherp. But we're going to go ahead and put some fresh mozzarella on the top. And if this isn't making you hungry, people, I don't know what does. I did math almost perfect. We got two slices left. Yeah, you did. Uh, Chef Greg, what kind of mozzarella is that? Bo buffalo mozzarella? Shoot, yeah. All right, that's what there I'm There you go, John. About. I got you on a piece right there. Okay. Here, sling it to me. No. I, I'm, not, I'm not wasting that piece of cheese. <laughs> okay. I didn't call it. I, you would have caught it, but I didn't afraid I'd have messed that one up. Oh, right, that's good. And we're, uh, we're too good of friends for me to mess up. That's true. Mm. That's good stuff right there. But if you've not had really good butts of buffalo mozzarella, like the the richness and creaminess, mm. You could also use, um, I've done it in the past with burrata. So you can use a uh, burrata cheese as well. Mm. Um, but for burrata, I probably wouldn't cook it down. I would just plate it up and then kind of um, rip the burrata on the top oh, just because be it's really, really, really soft. Oh, man. We only had two pieces left. I'm a little disappointed. I could have gotten for more of that. <laughs> All right, Sherp, let's go ahead and add the um, garlic and the marsala wine to this. We'll be on that RTB380 bullseye. And we're going to squeeze that garlic in there. And again, this is something you can do ahead of time. Oh, man, that already smells so absolutely good. absurd. I could just eat that. Yeah. And then we're going to grab that Marsala wine. And again, you could use Madeira. You could use vermouth. You could use Marsala. You could use Sambuca. And if you uh, have never tried this with Sambuca, you're missing out. Okay? Sounds a little strange, but I'm telling you, it's delicious. All right, then we've got our, uh, our brown gravy here, which is already kind of thick. We're just going to warm it up on there. I'm not going to add the fresh sage until the very end because I don't want to... Um, uh, I don't want to wilt that away. I want it to be nice and fresh and vibrant. And one thing you guys want to be careful with when you're using fresh herbs, okay, with the exception of, say, fresh rosemary, always add your herbs at the very end because it's really going to optimize all of those flavors uh, of those uh, fresh herbs. So Chef John took his time growing them. I'm going to respect right. them and use them at the most uh, opportune point and peak of their freshness. That's what I'm talking about. So... John, what you got, buddy? All right, two questions coming at you. First one's from top fan, uh, Nanny Counts. She wants to know how long will the roasted garlic keep in the refrigerator? And the second question comes from Michael Keys. He wants to know, can you do this without alcohol? For sure. You could just do the mushroom sauce with the, uh, the brown gravy and be delicious. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, if you're worried about the alcohol, the alcohol will cook out of the sauce. If you're feeding uh, children and stuff, it's completely safe. But if you don't want to, um, you know, uh, incorporate alcohol into the food, that's fine. Just use um, just brown gravy and the vegetables, and you're good to go. As far as the garlic, you can't cook enough that you're not going to use in, like, two days. I that's made true. eight massive bulbs of smoked garlic yesterday. That's the last one. Why? Because we're fat people around here. That's right. Um, but I would recommend if you're going to keep it, um, I would squeeze it out of the bulb when it's warm. It makes it much easier to squeeze it out. And you can always pop it out into small silicon molds of, like, the ice cube trays. And that way you can just kind of pop those out as you need, and they're literally going to melt into your food. That sounds awesome. Gravy. So good. Okay. You can see it's already starting to simmer down. And we're just going to add that brown gravy in there. And we're going to allow that just to reduce and simmer and get thick and get happy and get delicious and get amazing. I was just given a super secret note. <laughs> yeah, don't let by, anyone see that. By one Mr. Charlie Weir. That's right. And uh, where? 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 John gets my name wrong. I can get your <laughs> name wrong, okay? Good Lord. We're going we're gonna to put that right there because you might not realize and you might not have remembered. That's right. That on last week's After Hours, we did a little something-something. Well, actually, right. Ray kind of came in and said we could do a little something-something. 
and we are giving away an RTB380 bullseye. We know so, we are. So right here, okay? Don't let him see, Chef not Greg. I'm not going to ruin it, John. You can see through the paper. Well, I'm not going to hold it up so okay. that you can all see. Right, I, that's right, why right. I folded it in half. All right, okay. But underneath there, uh, keeping well safe from blowing away with this beautiful breeze is going to be that winner of that RTB380 bullseye. So if you guys want to know if it's you or one of your family members or somebody in your RegTech family, go ahead and smash that share button. Okay, we're making smoked chicken salt and boca right now. That's right. Woo! Nope. Sure. Can't come in there yet. Can't come in there. Can't <laughs> come in there yet. It's almost ready. Not quite, but almost. And the one thing about Italian food I think people um, take for granted is how to plate it up. Because good Italian food is meant to be shared. That's it's right. meant to be uh, eaten and consumed at the table with family around. So when you make this recipe, do yourself a solid. Put that basket of everybody's phones and technologies and smartwatches in it. Go ahead and hide it in the oven or the dishwasher or the microwave, somewhere where they can easily be broken and damaged. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But <laughs> celebrate dinner with your friends and family because you know what? There's something to be said about enjoying food and breaking bread with family, taking time out of your day to ask how school was, how work was, and just kind of shut it down for a few minutes. Because I don't know about you, John. What? One of my favorite things to do is cook. My second favorite thing to do is eat. That's right. And I like to eat with people I love. And, um, you know, dinner's a great time. I'm going to go ahead and add that fresh sage into there. Ah, just like that. Okay. Charlie, why are you laughing, man? <laughs> yeah, I they, told you what? they could see through the paper shift, I Greg. folded it in half. They could see through the paper shift, Greg. People, okay, if you yourself want to win an RTB380 bullseye, first do this. Go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. Go to rectech.com, scroll down to the bottom of any page, type your uh, email address in there, accept emails from us. Uh, we also sent an email out a while back for those that had wanted to get, I'll say, on the bullseye hot list. So go back through your emails. Uh, we have a bullseye specific email that is available as well. And I blame Charlie for ruining the surprise. No. Of, of what it was. No. You know, you should have printed it on cardstock and maybe not use a blue highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all family. We love you around here. Um, but again, get you a good platter. Do this family style. As far as sides, you could do a beautiful creamy risotto with this. Maybe you got some beautiful uh, polenta. Uh, you could do this with pasta. Any side you want. Honestly, it's up to you. I just love to eat. That's not what I want to do. But I'm going to go ahead and check the internal temp of this chicken with my trusty Thermoworks MK4. Woo, child, please. We are right about, we want to be 165. We're about 150 on some of this chicken. So we're going to let this go for just a little bit longer. Look at that cheese. And check this out, Sherp. See, it doesn't stick. Okay? So I can go ahead and, like, pull this cheese off of here. It doesn't stick to the mat. That prosciutto right there, getting nice and crisp. Oh, man. Man, that looks These so are a few good. of my favorite things. And if yes. I knew the song, I would sing it. Yes. Because it's going to be singing in my mouth in about five minutes. These are a minutes. few of my favorite things. Cold beer. Cold beer. Also yeah. on my list of favorite things. Mm. Chef John, any good questions or comments coming in? They are. First, they all are laughing about the, the whole paper thing there but they're all saying that looks delicious 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 they're all saying they're shining up signing up for the newsletter now we might not get everything right around here but i know what we do get right that's right okay we get customer service right yeah we sure enough do. okay we get grills right we got this game on on lock okay this ain't no game everybody else is playing for second place okay game set we match. have fun that's here right. at RecTech. we make some delicious food Okay? And we're a family around here. That's, That's right. That's how we live the RecTech lifestyle. Okay? Heck yeah. Chef Greg, why don't you tell them what we have coming up tomorrow? Well, I mean, it's your favorite day. It because is my you're favorite doing, day. You're doing a double tomorrow. Double dip in tomorrow. You guys tomorrow. get to see uh, Chef John cook a lunch break, and that's going to be at 12 noon Eastern on YouTube. So make sure you, if you haven't already, go over to uh, RecTech YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Ring that bell. You're going to get some amazing content. we got some new recipes dropping. I know Ray and Stevie were uh, having a good old time a couple, uh, couple days right. ago making some good recipes. Those they videos sure will be were. out very soon. 
but you'll see Chef John throwing down some some of his favorite Italian dishes. And then I said he's doing a double because you know what? Tomorrow, Thursday, it's late night munchies. That's right. Okay, on that's Instagram. gonna be eleven o'clock on that's Instagram. Right. That's right. But you're actually doing a triple tomorrow. Triple. Because we got product spotlight. Oh yeah. So they get to see me and you. Well, they get to see me and you twice. That's right. But they get to see you three times tomorrow. Three times. Because at eleven o'clock, I am snug as a bug in a rug, passed <laughs> out, snoring like a fat kid. At 11 o'clock. I'm going to get you and Julie to come to a late night Monday. I will watch it the next morning you at know, 4 o'clock when I wake up. I'm going to get you to be a guest on the show <sighs> so I can feed y'all delicious treats Virtually. I'll join you while I'm laying down <laughs> sleeping. It'll be, it'll be dark in the screen. You can't it'll see anything. It'll be a good date night thing, Chef Greg. You and Julie strolling out late night. I mean, with back. three kids, you're not going to drive an hour, an hour back for date night. Hey. You're going to go somewhere close by and you're going to you know, optimize the time you have. I'm, hey, people out there, would you guys not come to Late Night Munchies if you had an open invitation? Be careful, to get cooked because if you say that, Chef if John? you say that, we had 5,500 people here for Rec Tech Fest last <laughs> last February. I'm you, just saying. You throw I'm that offer out there, what's going to happen? They're going to be lined up at the gate down Evans Locks both ways. I'm saying say Chef Greg's them. missing out. You guys should, y'all should email him at chefgreg at rectech.com and tell him he's to come to a late night munchies with me. They can email me all you want, but just make sure you do it during business hours because I'll be sleeping. So again, we're gonna take this delicious chicken that's been wrapped with prosciutto ham and fresh sage. We're gonna plate this up family style. Okay, that fresh mozzarella, Oh man, oh man. Super that super looks tasty. Delicious. This does not suck. Okay. I don't care who you are. If you don't think this looks good, you need to like I don't know, refresh your browser or something. <laughs> that looks delish. You're killing it. I mean, there is one thing we don't do around here. And it's mess around with food. Yeah. Okay. Because you know, we know what's good around here. Chef John of mine's plate. There you go. Man, you went all out with the chicken today, Chef. I mean, there's some hungry boys and girls around here. You know I'm not going to screw around with that. So there we go. We've got that smoked chicken salt and boca, but it ain't done yet because we got that sauce. Okay. Looky, looky, looky. Woo, child, please. That's what I'm talking about. Chirpy coming in? Nope. Okay, yeah, I'll take it off. In. He's coming in. I thought you were going to bring it over. I, I am. I was just, you know, giving you an opportunity. But again, look at how beautiful that sage mushroom gravy is. That's going to be the good good right there. Okay? Now, be careful when you're pulling Ooh. cast iron off a grill like that because it's hotter than Hades. Okay? Make sure you get some good towels. And what we're going to do is we're going to garnish uh, Chef John and mine's plate first. Yes. And just pour that mushroom gravy over the top. Chef Greg, they have a great I idea out here. <laughs> they said I should do a late night munchies live from Chef Greg's house. You can. I've got cameras up. Uh, the police <laughs> will get called. You know. The uh, the alarm will go off because Ooh. I'll be sleeping. But, yeah, I tell you what. You pick the day and time. Okay. Well, I know the time. It's 11 o'clock. That's right. You pick the day. I'll come downstairs in my pajamas. Okay. I'll cook late night munchies with you at the house. Okay. Well, that's okay. A, you heard it here is, first, is, is everybody. That, is that good? I'll do it's it. It's a date. That's a date. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take this, and I'm just going to do the same thing over the top. Actually, you know what? We're going to go riot mode here. Riot mode it. Because I am, uh, I'm lazy. Don't burn yourself, Chef Craig. I mean, I know better than that. Uh, yeah. If that doesn't make you hungry, there's something wrong with you. Now, what you want to do is I made a mess, but that's why we got towels and a washing machine. I was not showing up on camera, Chef Craig. It looks beautiful on camera. Okay. So we're going to take that, grab a little bit more of those mushrooms and onions and sage. Mm. Oh. Mm. My. Lord, who says you can't make some amazing classic Italian food on your rec tech? That's it's not just I'm for barbecue. Talking about it's not just for ribs, briskets, 
I mean, it is. It makes some amazing ribs. It makes some amazing briskets because, you know what? I made an amazing six racks of ribs today, okay? And I'm going to eat those a little bit later on. But, no, I'm actually going to eat this here right here. <laughs> Chef John, you ready to come eat this with me? Yes. I thought you would never ask. Of course I'm going to ask. All right. We got some plastic cutlery because we, uh, we spent the budget on the food. Oh, man. Not the cutlery. I had three forks. Okay. Here we go. This looks great, man. Cheers to you. You go for it, buddy. Okay. Dive on all right, in. I'm diving in. It might be hot. Well, I mean, I know it's going to be hot because it's okay. it just came off the grill. It's all right. I don't mind it hot. But we got that fresh mozzarella, the prosciutto, mm. that mushroom sage gravy. Mm. That's what you want right oh, there. Man. Woo! Did I do a Did I do Veronica a solid? Yeah. Shoot, yeah. Hallelujah! That's mm -hmm. some good, delicious chicken very moist well mm -hmm. seasoned it's got that earthy umami flavor from the mushrooms do that sage though yeah that sage be popping it's got a little bit of saltiness from the pork oh my gosh man you killed it mm -hmm. killed it again cheers everybody uh there you go oh take that with me all right yeah all right you know what it looked like you missed lunch today i did so that's how we're gonna roll but guys that's it. Wow. Smoked chicken, salt and boca. We cooked that on the RT 590. Wow. We paired that up with the RTB 380 bullseye, making that a delicious mushroom gravy. You could serve this in any world-class restaurant, and I guarantee rave reviews. Mm. I said mm. it here, okay? I challenge anybody out there Yeah. Okay. that thinks they make good chicken, salt and boca, I think this right here takes it first place. I think it may. Just throwing it out there. I think okay? it may. I mean, I could put some like Jan Berg's pimento cheese on here. Ooh. Okay. And like Ooh. next level this and make this like some Ooh. some redneck Harlem <laughs> chubby boy chicken salt and boca. Chef Greg, what Turn would you there. serve this with? Could you do pasta, rice? What would you do? With the mashed potatoes. For me, I would love, 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 love some delicious creamy uh, polenta. Okay. Ooh, polenta. That would be A nice, perfect. like, smoked garlic and mascarpone polenta. That would polenta. be perfect. You could even man. cook that polenta, like, the day before and then fry it. Get mm -hmm. a little crispy, crispy. Yes. Roasted potatoes would be great. Uh, risotto would be great. Rice would be great. Pasta would be great. Orzo would be great. Couscous would be great. Honestly, whatever you want to do, mashed potatoes, there's no rules. It's just what you guys want to do and how you want to live your rec tech lifestyle. That is what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. All right, but... I know we kind of let the cat out of the bag earlier. Yeah, we did. Behind you, here. No, you let the cat out of the bag, Chef I Greg. can't help it. He wrote it in the <laughs> brightest blue marker on the thinnest white paper in existence. <laughs> That's not Dunder Mifflin's paper. That's what the problem is. It's not what now? Dunder Mifflin paper. Dunder Mifflin paper? What's that? Oh, sweet black baby Jesus. It's okay. It's, it's an office joke. Okay. I got nothing. I don't watch The Office. Oh, if no. It was, if it was like a Grey's Anatomy joke, I would have picked up on that. Okay, Why? Grey's because, Anatomy. You know. Right, I, Grey's the Anatomy. The wife watches it. I watch it next to her. You know, it's how I... <laughs> eh, anyway. All right. So last week, we gave away an RTB380 bullseye. And Charlie almost ruined it, writing the name of the winner. Almost did. On the piece of paper <laughs> with the brightest blue marker ever. But congratulations, Sean Woods. You have won yourself an RT. B380 Bullseye. Sean. Sean, so here's what you need to do. Go ahead and shoot us a message on Facebook. Uh, shoot us a DM. We will get your information. We'll send that RTB380 Bullseye out to you. Just for clarification, Rectech will never ask for you to send us financial information over Facebook or Instagram or over the Internet. That's not how we roll. That's right. Okay? If you win something, we're going to announce it live on one of our shows, and we're going to ask you to message us. Okay? It's all about safety. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Okay, if they want this recipe plus any other recipe that they see, where can they go? What do they need to do? I mean, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, make sure you guys go to rectech.com slash lunchbreak. Put your email address in there. We'll get this recipe out to you as with all of the recipes, okay? And if there's a recipe that you can't find, just go ahead and email Chef John, Jody, or myself. You can shoot us a message on Facebook. It's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. And while you're at it, okay, back up Facebook like two weeks where we give links to uh, Chef John's uh, page, Jody, your barbecue rec tech, your rec tech grills expert, That's right. Jody Flanagan, barbecue dad, and myself. Go ahead and give us a follow on there because we appreciate that. Totally do. And um, if it wasn't for you guys sharing on these posts, commenting on these posts, sh 
posting pictures of the delicious food that we make that you guys make for your friends and family. That's right. We wouldn't have a job, so we appreciate each and every one of you guys. We totally love do. you uh, in all sincerity. Uh, without you guys, we would not be able to be here sharing our craft with you. So um, I definitely appreciate that. Chef Craig, now talking about appreciating these people, don't you think that we should be able to give something away today too in appreciation for all of our people out there? I tell you what, let's do this, okay? We'll give you a week, okay? We'll give you till next Wednesday. What I want you guys to do is really simple. Post a picture of this recipe right here, but make it your own, okay? It's really simple. It's literally chicken with herbs wrapped in prosciutto ham and a sauce. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay, make it yours. We'll send this recipe out. Charlie, what do you think this recipe could go out? Friday, maybe? Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll send this recipe out. We'll, we'll hopefully send this exact <laughs> recipe out by Friday. If not, make it your own. Go ahead and tag Jody. Okay, that's going to be a barbecue dad, Jody Flanagan. Tag Chef John Pinnell. And tag myself, Chef Greg Muller, in that post. We will pick a winner. And uh, what say you, John? We give away... A Rectech prize pack. Oh consisting, boy. Consisting okay. of a rub and sauce bundle. Yes. Okay, because again, if you're gonna make the recipes, it's got everything for you. That's right. That's right. Sherp's girlfriend's in the house. Hey, it's Emily. So we'll give you a Rectech prize pack of a uh, limited edition t shirt. Okay. It could be an after hour shirt. I like that. It could be a late night munchie shirt. I like it that. It could be a fun day Friday shirt. Something you cannot buy. That's right. I like that. And, and then, then we'll hook it up with something special that we're not going to announce. Yeah. How about that? So three things. You okay, can win a shirt, things. yes, rub and sauce bundle, and something we and won't then tell something you. that we pick. That's right. Just kind of unannounced. Awesome. But it'll be awesome. And then you got to post a picture of that and let us know how you like it. How That's about right. that? I love that. So go ahead and uh, tag Rectech Grills, Chef John, myself, and Jody, and uh, go ahead and make your favorite rendition of this delicious smoked chicken salt and boca. That's it. Easy that? peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah, couldn't get much easier than that, Chef Greg. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think it's about time that we wrap this show up. But make sure you guys do us a solid. Follow us on all social media because you never know when we're going to go live. And I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. Okay? That's right. Everywhere. Everywhere. Carrier Pigeon. That's okay? right. Okay, there's, there's social media carrier pigeons. That's right. Okay? Hopefully, at some point, we can deliver this to you guys. <laughs> but tomorrow is going to be a busy, busy, busy day. We got lunch break at noon with Chef John on YouTube. We got product spotlight with at 4 o'clock with Chef John and myself. And then Chef John's going rogue Thursday late, night late on night Instagram munchies. at 11 o'clock. He's going to do something good, good. Real okay. good. Friday. It, I'll give you a hint. It's going to be keeping the with the Italian theme. Uh, we are going to keep with that Italian theme. Yeah, we're keeping with that Italian theme. This right. Friday, we're going to do something delicious for Fun Day Friday. Again, we're going to bring out that wheel of Rectech. We're going to spin yeah. it hard. We're going to spin it clockwise. Yeah. And we're going to spin it with the utmost confidence. Why? Because we want to give you guys That's some right. amazing prizes. So, again, go to Rectech.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Sign up for the newsletter. It's been a great after hours. Hey, you forgot one thing on Friday, Chef Greg. What? Ah, movie night. Yeah, How my can man. you forget movie night? My We're man. showing the Patriot. That's what I'm talking about. September Mel Gibson 11. going ham. Yeah. God, I love that guy. It's I mean, he's a little bit crazy, but back in those Super days, crazy. he was, I mean, crazy in a different way. Yeah. But make sure you guys join us here for Rec Tech Movie Night. Gates open at 6. Movie starts at 7.30. We got food trucks coming in. $10 a car. It was a full house last week. Yeah, it was so make fun. sure you guys don't delay. Get here early. Bring the kids. Bring all the family. Uh, coolers are welcome. So again, however you want to, guys want to live your Rectech lifestyle, join us here at 4301 Evans Deluxe Road at the worldwide headquarters of Rectech. But from Chef John, myself, and everybody here at headquarters, God bless you. God bless the United States. And we will see you at, at the Rectech. Do, do, do. Michael, do, what's do, up, do, buddy? Do, Tom Taylor, we appreciate do, it. Brad, do, do. Eddie, Bob. Rick, hey, man, we appreciate Rick, you guys Rick, tuning in. Dale, Vince, Julie, Wade, Kevin, down. Nanny. Live your we got a lot of people watching out there today. Over Rick, 200 Rick, people right now. That's amazing. Do, do, do. Jeff Holden. Maybe we'll make cannolis. You never know. It could be tiramisu. It could be tortufo. It could be truffle. You never know. Donald, we'll see you guys later. Ray, Dustin. Do, it's time do, to go do, eat. Rick, take lifestyle.